My name is Margaret. I am SAG actor. I'm a background actor. This is the tale of Margaret E. Owens of Philadelphia, background actor. Once upon a time, in a land where dreams came to life, there lived a talented soul named Margaret. She toiled tirelessly, day after day, spending countless hours on a magical set, bathed in the soft glow of the spotlight. Sorry, do I know you? So now that I'm standing in front of you, you have nothing to add? I didn't say anything. So you didn't just call me a fat ass as I jogged by? There's no one around. I'm telling you, I didn't say a word. You're not that skinny anyway. Keep running. Yet, amidst all the enchantment, she received no credit for her tireless efforts. I'm lucky I have a nine to five job that I can fall back on, but truly, this is my passion and I can't do it. Well, boo f***ing who? Nerdorotic.com Greetings you over 549,000 Awakening Wonders in the 40% who haven't subscribed yet. It has been, at time of recording, 131 days since the Writers Guild of America went on strike and 58 days since the Film Actors Guild has gone on strike. Let's see how things are going. Big news from Hollywood. Late night shows and Saturday Night Live are going dark. Hi, I'm Jimmy Fallon. Oh, I'm Stephen Colbert. I'm Jimmy Kimmel. I thought when you said Jimmy, you meant me, Jimmy, but you meant Jimmy, Jimmy. I always me. mean you. <laughs> but when you I say always mean you. Seth Meyers, who do you mean? I mean John Oliver. It's sense. the five of us together for uh, maybe an hour a, a day. Oh, somebody kill me, please! Efforts at damage control are on over at The Tonight Show after a devastating article claimed that host Jimmy Fallon has created a toxic workplace. Some former employees even claimed there were so-called crying rooms where staffers would sit and weep. Others claimed their hair was thinning and even suicidal thoughts due to the stress of working for Fallon. I need my writers. I need them real bad. Mila Kunis describes Masterson, a convicted rapist, as having a caring nature and says he is an outstanding role model. Oof. We are aware of the pain that has been caused by the character letters that we wrote on behalf of Danny Masterson. We support the victims. But after weeks on the picket line, the strike is taking its toll. This is the first month I, since I moved out here that I, I, don't, I don't know how I'm going to pay my rent this month. What about food? Gas? All yeah. those things you have to have to get through the day. <laughs> um, things are really hard right now. Things are really dire. I don't think I'm going out on a limb here by saying things aren't going so well for woke Hollywood and we're seeing it break up right before our eyes and this may come as a surprise to everyone working in Tinseltown, although it shouldn't. There's a lot of people who either don't care or who are enjoying the hell out of this. The LA Times came out with a poll and it showed that not a lot of people are really thinking about that. <laughs> I think it was only like 38% of respondents say they sympathize more with the striking actors and writers. People are tr struggling to make their bills, uh, keep their lights on. I mean, it, the way the economy is, even though you keep hearing from this administration how strong and wonderful everything is, people aren't feeling that. Inflation's yeah. through the roof. And so people don't care as much about you know striking writers and striking actors it's the it's about number 74 on their list of 75 things i don't think you're going to get a big public outcry supporting this again most human beings on planet earth could care less about the wga or the film actors guild strikes and that should shake the entire entertainment industry to its core but there are some who have broken out the marshmallows and they're roasting them on the Hollywood Inferno. The strikes are just the latest of the self-inflicted wounds, including but not limited to Hollywood abandoning viable revenue streams like licensing, physical media, and the theaters so they could go all in on the new Silicon Valley slash Netflix tech model of fake it till you make it until they found out they couldn't make it. The streaming bubble burst and now the entertainment capital of the world is dealing with a little shrinkage and they're not taking it too well. Woke Hollywood is starting to eat itself and it's glorious. But how could you say that? People are losing their jobs. Yes, to the good people in Hollywood and the innocent parties who have nothing to do with the culture war, my heart goes out to you. Unfortunately, the face of your industry, you know, the producers, the writers, and the adult pretenders, seems to hate the customer. That's the perception, and therefore, that's the reality. And it's not like we haven't been warning you that this was coming for years. We tried to warn you that demonizing half of the country because they supported a president, a guy Hollywood used to love, wasn't a good idea. 
Syria. We tried to warn you that rooting on the summer of love, which was cities in America burning, probably wasn't a good idea. One or two of us might have pointed out that allowing activists who don't like things like capitalism into your companies might not be very good for an industry that needs to make money. And I'm pretty sure a few people brought up that allowing that activist wolf in the door would lead to things like DEI or quotas and rules on your awards that limits things like creativity, which in turn leads to things like subverting and vandalizing beloved properties that used to make you money. And I seem to recall millions of people pointing out that Maybe it's not the best idea to root on things like authoritarianism, especially when people just wanted to go to work and save their homes. No, screw your freedom. Wear a mask, social distance. If you can't do that, I don't have much respect for you. And yes, we are doing it maskless. Think of this as a movie set, an Oscars movie with a cast of over 200 nominees. So just like on a movie set, when we are rolling, Masks off. <laughs> and now we have Hollywood actors and writers concerned about losing their jobs and losing their homes. No, they really couldn't have written a better script. From The Hollywood Reporter, record number of Hollywood workers facing evictions, seeking rent assistance amid strikes. Actors, writers, and crew members are being hit by both the work stoppage and the end to the COVID tenant protections as MPTF President Bob Beicher says we're talking to people who are living in their cars and in some cases with their families. I think this is a good time to point out once again that Hollywood was considered essential by the state of California during COVID when millions of people, including my wife, were not. For those of you who are new to the channel, thanks to the COVID policies of Mayor London Breed of San Francisco and Governor Gavin Newsom of California, my wife was forced to shut down her very successful salon of 15 years forever. Anyway, back to the article. Four months into the writer's strike and almost two months into the Film Actors Guild strike, the fear of industry workers losing their apartments and homes due to the work stoppage has become an increasingly looming threat. A work stoppage that both the Writers Guild of America and the Film Actors Guild voted to approve. In July, Deadline published a story with quotes from an anonymous studio exec saying the game plan was to let strikes drag on until union members were losing their housing. And at a recent event, entertainment community fundraiser Annette Benning confirmed that this is indeed happening. For many non-celebrity actors, the strikes have been financially ruinous. The strike has had a massive impact on my housing situation. I worked one day in May, and since then, all work has stopped. Actor David Bach told The Hollywood Reporter, I've almost depleted my entire savings, and I haven't been able to pay my rent in the last few months. My building manager and property owners extended me a grace period due to the good social credit I have built up by doing some gardening and landscaping in our building's common area. Noble. However, in early August, I received an eviction notice from the building management company taped to my front door. Now, maybe David Bach forgot to mention it, or maybe he didn't want to mention it for the narrative, but I didn't hear anything about looking for another job or taking on some gig work like Uber Eats or Uber for a side hustle. Admitting it's downright humbling as an adult to come to find you've reached the limit of your own self-sufficiency and that it's time to ask for help. He applied to the Film Actors Guild Foundation's aid program and quickly received a check for the month's rent. Why do you need to apply? They're the ones who decide to go on strike, and a lot of their members need to pay rent and mortgages. You think the union would have had that all worked out since they're the ones who decided to go on strike, but quite frankly, I don't know how unions operate because in any of my previous careers, when I had a chance to join one, I didn't for precisely these reasons. Listen, I want this guy to be able to pay his rent. I'm not rooting for the producers or the studios or the actors or the writers. I'm coming at this from a customer perspective. And I have to ask, is this all bullshit? We're not talking about an industry that's known for its candor. And despite the fact that the WGA and the Film Actors Guild are constantly talking about their unity and claiming they're just around the corner from total victory. We also have articles like this from The Hollywood Reporter. Majority of Americans support writers actors over studios and strikes. Gallup poll finds union support remains high among Americans as more than 70% side with the writers. You don't say. 
That sounds impressive, doesn't it? Except when you hear this. The Gallup poll was conducted via telephone interviews in August with a random sample of just over 1,000 adults living in all 50 states in the District of Columbia. Well, I ran a little poll of my own on Twitter back on August 11th, and I asked, do you care about the Hollywood strike? 3.2% said yes, hurry back. 96.8% said no, stay on strike. By the way, that poll received 12,909 votes. And now the unions want to divide and conquer by trying to break up the alliance of motion picture and television producers. And to be fair, the alliance of motion picture and television producers are trying to break up the unions. And I'm for all of them breaking up. Quite frankly, neither side has looked very good to this point, and the AMPTP, or the armpit as I like to call them, has also hired a prominent Washington DC based crisis PR firm to help with its messaging, which hasn't been very good. By the way, that crisis PR firm also helped Washington DC with its messaging during a certain pizza incident. And unwisely, the writers and actors decided to use the Star Trek franchise today to get their messaging out. Star Trek stars join the picket lines in Hollywood. And there we see George Takai, Mr. Day Rate player himself, according to William Shatner, and Mr. Consequence culture LeVar Burton. It's interesting they bring up Star Trek, the once storied franchise that was brought back and turned into repurposed garbage by Jar Jar Abrams and Alex Kurtzman, and when they accidentally made a good season of television with Terry Metalis' Picard Season 3, they decided to grab defeat out of the jaws of victory and follow it up with more garbage, making Kurtzman Trek one of the best examples of everything wrong with woke Hollywood. So despite all the rhetoric and the yammering, it kind of seems that the producers are getting exactly what they want. Force majeure is in full effect. From NBC News, Warner Brothers suspends deals with Mindy Kaling, the creator of the wildly unsuccessful Velma, and Jar Jar Abrams, the destroyer of franchises. Shows are being canceled like Amazon's The Peripheral, despite getting a second season. Now, to be fair, the only reason it got a second season was they didn't want to piss off Chris Nolan's brother. And the disastrous Disney Plus is using this opportunity to delay, hopefully indefinitely, shows like Echo and Agatha, whatever the hell it's called now because it's gone through three title changes. But not to worry, ladies and gentlemen, we're still getting the Marvels in November. I said before this strike started, look for a lot of shows to be outright canceled or very quietly shelved indefinitely and that's happening and we've only just begun as we have gone over extensively in my previous strike videos hollywood has finally been forced to look at some of the errors of their ways due to new technology they are in the midst of a massive paradigm shift that they weren't ready for every time the technology changes there's a strike yeah what i was saying i think the other day was that you know you, that's the card you're dealt the technology has changed you can't you can't Turn back the hands of time, as Cher said. Now, of course, the problem with the streaming is that two of the biggest media companies now, Amazon and Apple, they don't care about yeah, this stuff. It's, it's a, a side it's a gig. Yeah. It's just a flex to impress their girlfriends to have movie companies. Bill Maher's an idiot, but he's right on this one. Streaming isn't going anywhere. You can't unmake the soup. And instead of being the great decentralization of Hollywood that it should have been, it's going to be the great contraction thanks to the strike. And thanks to a lot of government interference dating back to the 90s in the Clinton administration, it will only speed up the mergers, the consolidations, and be what the producers wanted this to be from the get-go, a purge. And all of this would have been hard enough to overcome for Hollywood, except for one thing that makes it a thousand times worse, the culture war. Something the corporate media and the corporations will never mention. Not that they're not aware of it. No, au contraire. They're active participants. Social engineering, fortification, and forced behavior. Don't believe me? You have to force behaviors. And if you don't force behaviors, whether it's gender or race or just any way you want to say the composition of your team, you're going to be impacted. And that's not just not recruiting it is development as ken said and ultimately it's still going to take time but i am just as much shocked as ken is that we have not 
seeing more opportunities and we're going to have to force change. That again was the head of BlackRock, who just so happens to own a sizable portion of stock in Apple, Disney, Google, Amazon, Netflix, Warner Brothers, Paramount, I could go on. And let's not forget Vanguard's in there too. And somehow Vanguard owns more BlackRock stock in BlackRock than BlackRock. And this is happening all through the entertainment industry, all through mainstream media, all through big tech, and all through our entire society. That's why giant corporations who are supposed to be in competition with each other all have very similar messaging. And that's why so many of our favorite properties are being reimagined for a modern audience. Woke Hollywood doesn't want to admit they're part of the social engineering and trying to push things like compelled speech, like with this pronoun garbage that my good friend Az just went through. The entertainment industry as a whole and particularly corporate woke Hollywood also doesn't mention the culture war because they never thought they would lose it. The culture war or the pop culture war is far from over and no one said it would ever be easy, but we are gaining the upper hand. We are starting to win because they didn't think we'd do something like talk to each other. Me and a lot of my co-hosts from FNT have traveled across the country this year to do meetups to talk to our fellow members of the audience and currently I'm in the UK doing just that and the one thing I hear the most was I thought I was alone and as I've always said this has always been bigger than Star Wars or Star Trek or Lord of the Rings. We've all noticed the degradation of our culture and we were all told we were crazy for noticing it. And we were vilified for speaking out against it. Well, I'm here to tell you, you're not crazy and you're not alone. In the race to turn our escapism and our entertainment into a platform for influence, Hollywood ended up losing its relevance. Hollywood found out that they don't get to choose their audience, the audience chooses them. And people are sick of the ingratitude and the divisiveness. And they've gone from disappointed to angry, which are still forms of caring, to complete apathy. No, no one cares that you're on strike. It's the end of woke Hollywood as we know it, and we feel fine. If you like what you heard, please like, share, and subscribe. If you didn't like what you heard, I thank you for listening this long. I will see you in the next video. Nerdorotic.com, please subscribe.